Hi, Henny, how are you? It's Technicolor. Today, I have an exciting original build. This time, in Glimmerbrook, and it's a magical cat cafe. Let's check out the speed build, shall we? So, I have actually made cafes in the past, but never an original build. It's always been a shell challenge build that I have switched to be a cafe and I think I've I think I've maybe done it twice but I wanted something for my around the world's legacy challenge <clears throat> and that this will make sense so basically we're starting generation four with my generation four sim Luella Wyndham and her whole generation is going to be focused around cats and dogs. And you might be saying, well, how does this fit in? Generation five, we're, we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but generation five is going to be focused on realm of magic. So in order to have everything fit with the rules of this legacy challenge, Luella Wyndham's spouse needs to be a spellcaster because their child needs to be a spellcaster. And I don't know that it's 100% going to work that the child will be a spellcaster from birth, but I think that you can go and make your sim a spellcaster without cheating. So we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, Luella Wyndham is kind of becoming one of my new favorite sims. She's kind of becoming one of my new favorite sims. And this this cafe build is in Glimmerbrook, so it's going to be focused around Realm of Magic. But the thing is, I need her to meet a spellcaster partner. So I built this build for that reason. Slight hiccup. <laughs> I wanted her to meet her partner before she aged up into a young adult, because that's when I consider the start of the next generation. Because that's when we move out into our own houses and we start having children, all, all of that. However, my favorite sim of all time in this legacy challenge has been my my generation two sim, our heir. And he, his lifespan, <laughs> this man is like 600 years old. So basically Harry Wyndham was my generation two sim. Outlived everyone, basically. He has outlived his husband, his twin brother, his dog, outlived literally everyone. He, his lifespan, because we, his generation focused on Discover University and university takes up the entire young adult stage. So I wanted him to have a longer lifespan. I don't remember if we aged him back down once he became an adult. So he was an adult twice, or if we aged him back down when he was a young adult, so he was a young adult twice. I don't really remember, but I'm almost positive that we aged him down twice and then he died and I was like how funny would it be if we plead for his life to Grimm and Grimm is like yeah girl you're fine and that's what happened <laughs> I was not expecting it at all because I think everyone in the family was afraid of death so if you are afraid of death you you can't plead like you're, you're too scared to talk to Grimm I think I think that's like the whole thing and Graham was not afraid of Grimm or death and he he pleaded successfully to Grimm that is Harry's son-in-law <laughs> and Graham is Harry's son-in-law and then I think I think Harry was like given like two extra days so it was like okay that's fine and Luella is going to be aging up soon, so we don't want him to live for that long. And I realized that Luella wasn't afraid of death. So I said, well, how funny would it be if we just get like a couple of extra more days? Like, I'm not ready to let go of this sim. I I love Harry Wyndham. He honestly has been my favorite sim the entire time. His pet has been my favorite pet in the entire thing. This might change with Luella since she's again going to be revolving around cats and dogs. But I was like, I want him, Harry to live a little bit longer, like a little bit longer. So when he died, again, I had Luella, his granddaughter, plead for his life. And she was also successful. <laughs> so Luella was like, okay, brought my grandfather back to life. And Harry lived like way longer than you would expect. I don't know how, I don't know if it's like a set amount when you plead that Grimm gives them to live longer. But Harry lived way longer than he did after the first pleading. So Graham pled, pled for his life and it was like maybe two days, I think. And Luella pled and it was like over a week. 
<laughs> like Harry lived a really long time and I was able to mourn Harry like twice at this point. So I was, I was like, this man needs to move on. <laughs> I was like, this this man needs to move on because Luella is starting her generation. We need to move her out. And the whole thing with my Around the World's Legacy Challenge is that with each generation, they get to divide the household funds. So they take a portion of it. So you basically count how many like human sims there are or occult sims, like whatever. Like I'm not counting horses or dogs. And you, you you basically figure out how much that sim gets from the household funds. And then depending on the rules, there's also a new home buyer incentive of 20,000 simoleons. So I need Luella to make a certain amount of money with the household funds so that her portion is big enough with the new home buyer incentive to afford her house. And spoiler alert, I already built her house. <laughs> Normally I built that next generation Sims house on stream. And my Twitch chat uh, is totally involved. We, we kind of figure out like what we want it to look like. I usually have some sort of basis. Actually with our last Sim generation three, Basil, his house, I had built a shell. So maybe this is like foreshadowing that I'm Maybe not going to be building it on stream anymore. I don't know. But I had built a shell for Basil because I knew that the roofing for it was going to be very difficult for me. And I knew that I wanted Basil's house, which was going to be a cottage because we were in Henford on Bagley. I wanted his house to look like a specific reference photo that I already had. I wanted it to look like this cottage that exists in real life somewhere in the world. And... I actually needed my boyfriend who thankfully is an architect and kind of knows how to make the Sims do real things. I was able to get him to help me roof it. And then I was like, I'll, I'll do the rest on stream. So we did, we did the rest on stream and it was fine. However, Luella, I was like, I'm building hers completely off stream. Cause I, I couldn't wait. I just couldn't wait. I, so cats and dogs, that world, Brindleton Bay, is probably one of my favorites in the game. I think it's really beautiful. And I knew that I wanted a Cape Cod style because that kind of fits in with Brindleton Bay. I wanted that style of home and I really, really wanted it to be either expensive looking or actually expensive, depending on how it all worked out. I wanted her house to be kind of extravagant. I wanted it to be something that you looked at and you were like, oh, we're at this stage of the legacy challenge now. And I knew that I needed something that I could work on for a while. And I, I kind of had a feeling that if I had worked on this build for multiple days, it was going to take, well, obviously it would take a very long time for us to finish it. But I also wanted Luella to have the house ready to just move in. And I knew that I could spend that time off stream and just get it all done in my, in my spare time. So that's what I did. But if you didn't know, in addition to streaming on Twitch, I also have a Kofi page. And on there, I, I sell assets for streamers. I'm not promoting that right now, but I do have a, I do have like memberships, which is similar to how like Twitch subs work, if you're familiar with that. And as one of the benefits there, I, for a tier two a subscriber, for a tier two subscriber on Kofi, basically you get access to behind the scenes blog posts. And I thought a perfect one for that would be since I built Luella's house off of a reference photo of a real life house that is like on like the waterfront, it, it looked really beautiful. I knew that I could probably make a build using that reference photo or the reference photos and just get it done and make something that I was really proud of for Luella's house. And I, I had something in mind for a behind the scenes blog post, so I did. And my Kofi members thankfully did not spoil it for anyone in my Twitch chat, but they knew, they knew what was going on. They, they already saw it. So I actually unveiled it on yesterday's stream, which, when you're watching this will have been last Tuesday. So if you are interested, I stream, I stream on Twitch basically every single day, except for Wednesdays and Sundays. And I stream the Around the World's Legacy Challenge on Tuesday and Thursday morning. So if you're on the East Coast, which I am, I'm in New York City, I stream at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I unveiled it yesterday. So about a week from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> as you're watching this. And so if you come in tomorrow's stream, you will be able to see 
Luella's house. Everything should be all set. Actually, we had a little bit of a hiccup <laughs> because I was ready to move Luella in because I was convinced that I had enough funds. We didn't have enough funds. So things are delayed a little bit. I actually have to get that figured out before tomorrow's stream. And I don't know, but I'm very, I'm very proud of, of her house. It's this beautiful Cape Cod style. I'll put it on the gallery after her generation has ended. That's usually what I do. So I, I actually need to upload Basil, our generation three sim, his, his whole cottage lot. But I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with it. And I don't know. I feel like I've become a better builder especially since i've been doing these these speed builds especially ones that are original but the shell challenges that i've uploaded and i've done that i haven't uploaded i don't know i feel like i've grown so much as a builder it's so exciting to me i i don't know if i've mentioned this i've also been accepted into the builder games this season is actually going to be a world tour I'm, I'm a little stressed out by it because i still have to get uh i still have to get a bunch done <laughs> still need to work on my builds but yeah so there there's tons happening in in building i don't build typically on stream we will occasionally but you see a lot of the speed builds here on youtube so you're not really missing out on anything but getting back to this specific build again for luella i need to find her a spellcaster spouse and i wanted to make something that looked like it was fitting in the Glimmerbrook world, but I also wanted it to be on this lot specifically. And I don't know why, I don't know if you've seen the TV show Supernatural, but Supernatural, I felt like there were a bunch of situations where the people who were there, who were like living in the area, something Supernatural would be happening and they were completely unaware. And Maybe there was, I don't know, a vampire that was running a cafe or something. And like the people there who live there would have no idea. But Sam and Dean, they, they would know. And this lot kind of feels a little off to the side. It's almost like it's not really part of Glimmerbrook. It's kind of on the way in or it's on the way out. So maybe you're like driving through Glimmerbrook. So maybe you would stop at this cafe because it's there's only just a couple of houses. It's not like there's anything else to do in Glimmerbrook. But because there's just really this cafe, it's really the only hangout spot. So I figured what I could do was I could make this on this lot, which originally I think it was a bar. And I figured this would really work. And because magical beings typically have i forget what it's called in the spellcaster series i think it's called maybe a familiar but there's like i don't know in magical things there's like there's cats there's owls there's you know what i mean like that's like a typical thing so what i wanted to do was i wanted to make the cafe a cat cafe so it's sort of magical looking but also like inconspicuous enough that you wouldn't really know that it was like a place where spellcasters were hanging out like anyone could really go here and they they wouldn't necessarily know that magical things were happening so yeah <laughs> i don't know if i actually achieved that in this build because we used a lot of the realm of magic items maybe it just like looks kind of like interesting and cool to just like the normal sims like which luella is but who knows i don't know but i wanted it to be a cat cafe because i felt like that that works it, it just works with magical beings. And we had Luella actually visit this twice. So again, the, the game plan was to have her frequent this place a lot. And we didn't really do that. <laughs> but she has visited it twice before she aged up. I don't think there were any spellcasters here, but I also don't know if there's any way to like know if somebody is a spellcaster or not just by looking at them. And like maybe the guy that we're interested in who is one of our existing friends. Maybe he's already a spellcaster and I just don't know. I suppose that's possible. Because I know like celebrities, again, I'm still kind of new to The Sims, like, but I know celebrities, they have like that aura. Vampires will like straight up turn into bats. So I don't know, I guess it's possible. Like, you know, if somebody's a mermaid, if they're swimming around and they have a mermaid tail. Like, <laughs> Although I guess that's more visually obvious, like those examples, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. 
we'll have to see. I guess I'll have to check to see if Gage, the sim that we're interested in, if he could be a spellcaster. He's kind of like my backup plan. Is that terrible? That sounds terrible. He's kind of my backup plan because he'll be, I don't know, they have like, a fantastic friendship. Like their friendship level is off the charts. And I think that they would be a good couple, but then I have to go through the work of making him a spellcaster. And I don't really know if that's worth it because I also don't want to spoil the next generation for myself because I'm not that familiar with spellcasters or the realm of magic pack. So I would have to kind of like do the bare minimum with him. I guess I could make him a spellcaster and just not do any of that too? I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. It also won't be helpful to our child if they need, I don't know if they can learn things from existing spellcasters. I would assume that you can. Again, I don't really know, but I wanted this to be a place where she could meet her partner. And again, I kind of messed up because we virtually ignored Luella. <laughs> I had been doing a really good job of taking photos of my Sims throughout their life stages. I had done a really good job of kind of focusing on them throughout their childhood, through their teen years. And we just straight up did not do that with Luella. I think we went to high school with Luella, excuse me, twice. I felt like I needed to focus on the farm because we're in cottage living. We're in Henford on Bagley right now with generation three. We, we needed to focus on the farm animals because they were really never doing well. They kind of always wanted to, to leave. This was actually the first time that I haven't finished an aspiration before the next generation. So I kind of feel like I failed a little bit with Basil. I don't know. I was so excited for Basil and there's so much to do in cottage living. Like, I love that pack and I have a much better appreciation for that pack now because I feel like there's just so much that you can do and so much that you have to do that, I don't know, it felt like a very rewarding experience. And that's kind of the whole point of this legacy challenge. If you're interested, I'll also put the rules for my Around the World's Legacy Challenge in the description down below. But basically you're going to be focusing on a different pack each time that you play a new generation. So, the whole point is to get you excited about all of these packs that you probably already have, whether that's for the Kaz or for gameplay or for build items, which is kind of my focus. I feel like I, I, I'm I, much more of a builder and then a gameplay person second and probably a Kaz person almost never. Not that there's anything wrong with Kaz. I, I have a huge appreciation for people who can do so many amazing things in Kaz, not even with CC or anything like that. They're just, they just know how to make sims and i really don't <laughs> and i don't have the patience to go in and design my sims in ways where they look incredible i i just don't know how to do that and that's not something that i feel like i need to i feel like i really enjoy building and i know other people aren't as interested in building but i i don't know i love to do it i love to do it it's, it's kind of my joy from the sims but i have all of these packs for the build by items and i i I wanted to learn the gameplay of them. So I felt like this is a way to force myself to play through each pack. And my boyfriend and I wrote this legacy challenge kind of as like a free flowing thing. Originally we were gonna have it so that maybe this part didn't have to be linked to that part. So for instance, like maybe growing together didn't have to go into Discover University. Maybe you could like rearrange, but I feel like they're more flowy now. I think the last, pack that we have included is vampires. So again, we're only on generation four, but eventually we'll have to add in more because since then we've gotten a horse ranch, we've gotten for rent. We have, we have so many new packs now that we haven't included. Um, and also I've purchased other packs that I didn't have before. Like I have werewolves now, you might've noticed from this build. <laughs> I actually did not want werewolves at all. I. So a friend of mine has been playing um, their legacy challenge on their Twitch stream. I'll actually drop their their link down below, but it, it's my friend Kipted. They are doing a rainbow legacy challenge, which is kind of like a watered down version of Not So Berry. And they, they are very into werewolves and they made one of their Sims a werewolf and it kind of like, <laughs> completely changed the legacy challenge. They have since fed everyone from that generation into a cow plant. <laughs> I'll leave it at that, but you, you might want to check out their channel down below. But anyway, I never really liked werewolves in The Sims 4. 
And so many people have the build buy items because they have gotten the pack for whatever reason. And they just are selling all of the build buy items to me. I'm just like, even some of the cas, I'm like, this is really nice. I kind of want this. And there was... There was this last time that I was watching somebody either they were building an original build or they were working on a shell challenge and they had shown that moon mirror. It's like a crescent moon shaped mirror in The Sims 4 from the werewolves pack. And it's beautiful. And there's so many beautiful items from that pack that I saw the moon and I was like, OK, I need I need werewolves now. Like it, it was just decided for me. I need werewolves. And <laughs> I actually tried to get that mirror to work in this. I don't know that I actually kept it in, but you, you might see it floating around here some in some places. But I was like, I need werewolves so bad. So this last sale that they had like for the new year, I, I finally caved and I got it then. <laughs> but I... I don't know. The build items are really nice. Like, we're using the roofing here. We're using the siding. I don't know. It just really worked for this build. So we kind of lucked out that we already got werewolves. But anyway, I, I wanted to kind of go back to something that I was talking about and somehow got distracted. <laughs> But my Generation 2 Sim, my favorite, Harry Wyndham, we had extended his lifespan and Luella was the last person to plead for him. He died. He finally died on her <laughs> on her birthday. I really hope I haven't said this in, in this video already, but if I did, whatever. But he died on her birthday and he was actually making her birthday cake. And I had a feeling he was going to die during the party because it was just like perfect timing for that to happen. Because, you know, The Sims loves chaos. And he was working on her birthday cake. It was the very start of stream yesterday. And keep in mind, her birthday had been pushed forward a day because we were literally throwing her birthday party. I forgot to get ingredients to make her cake because we have a simple living lot trait uh, as part of the rules of generation three. <laughs> and we didn't have the items for the cake and they never delivered it. And I couldn't reorder it to like maybe spawn them again. They were supposed to deliver it and they just never did. So when we, when we opened again, on yesterday's stream, I was able to reorder the items. Or actually, no, I think it was at the end of the last stream, I was able to reorder the items. And then yesterday's stream, he was in the process of making the cake. Like, I think he just needed to put it in the oven. And he like finished what he was doing. And then it was like supposed to go the next stage where he would put it in the oven. And he's like, Susu. <laughs> And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so he didn't actually get to finish making her cake, but he was baking her cake with love. Let's be honest. Also slight bit tidbit that I don't know if I actually mentioned, but her birthday was now on Winterfest. <laughs> so we had to have her birthday early. Otherwise she would have just aged up on her own, but it was Winterfest. So not only did Harry die on Luella's birthday, he died on Winterfest. So all of the guests, Luella didn't even know yet. She she was upstairs talking with her other dad, Graham. She she was unaware and literally all of the guests and Basil were like sobbing. Like he died in the kitchen because he was he was baking the cake. So this small little area of the house, everyone is just sobbing. Even the dog was upset. Like the dog was upset and then like somehow sort of got the zoomies. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just a whole big thing. My Twitch chat was just like going crazy because it was like perfect timing that he would have died at the very start of her birthday, and then also died during Winterfest. Like literally he died and Grimm like came to like reap him and then give us the 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 urn. And then it was like, Luella's birthday is starting. Do you wanna like, you know, that little pop-up that you get whenever a birthday is starting? I was like, oh my God, this is the worst timing ever. But then everyone is sad. Like even, even the guests who really didn't know Harry, everyone is like sobbing, everyone's sad. We're trying to serve cake after we've just aged her up. And then I'm like, I need her to get a spouse now. And I don't know that we'll be able to meet somebody organically in this cat cafe um, because I also had it set up that one of the traits was, it was kind of like a teen hangout and she's no longer a teen. So it's not really gonna work. Um, I'll probably go in and change that lot trait, but she, she, I kind of had her start flirting 
with Gage, which is that Sim that she has the best friendship with. I wanted her to maybe end up with him. He's really hot. He's really hot. I can't even like emphasize how hot he is. And I was like, this would be a good person for her and for her to end up with, but it's still like kind of her backup plan because she needs to end up with a spellcaster and I don't really know what to do. I don't know how to make that happen. So <laughs> So I don't know. We have her potentially ending up with Gage. I could make him a spellcaster. I guess I'll have to ask my Twitch chat on tomorrow's stream, like, what do we do? Like, what do we think would work best? Like, do we want her to end up with Gage and make him a spellcaster? I feel like he would look like a spellcaster. The more that I think about it. I feel like he could very easily be a spellcaster. I don't know. I've also been talking about my Twitch stream a bunch, but I, I, I don't think I've actually mentioned like what that is or what I do there if you're unfamiliar. But if you're interested in the YouTube videos that I've been posting here, whether they're Sims related or not, I stream pretty much every single day over on twitch.tv forward slash Technicolor. So I stream The Sims two days a week. And then the other two days, I usually spend on a like longer format game. We just started Kingdom Hearts on Monday. So if you're interested in that, we haven't actually gotten that far in. Obviously we'll be a little further in if you're watching this video when it's posted next Wednesday, but we're, st we're still new in, in Kingdom Hearts. I've actually played it when I was younger. I played it when it came out on my PS2, but this is the remastered version. And I have to say it is it looks phenomenal. It looks phenomenal. Um, and I think it's also perfect because we're dealing with a game that has magic and stuff like that. And then we're going to be priming ourselves for the realm of magic generation. I don't know. I felt like it was fitting. And then on Saturdays, we usually play like maybe community games or interactive games. Last Saturday, we ended up doing some mini motorways and then we ended up doing some Dead by Daylight. The original plan was to do some GeoGuster. So I would like to do that soon because GeoGuster is really fun. I also might be a little bit annoying when it comes to GeoGuessr because I don't, I don't like to guess until I like know the answer. <laughs> Sometimes which infuriates my Twitch chat because like we could be there for hours. Like I think it maybe took us maybe like half an hour once to, to decide where to guess. And we were right. And we were very close. Like we were very close to where the actual like pin location was. But getting back to this build, I did put it on the gallery. I think... I think it would fit into a lot of people's builds, even if they don't necessarily love the overall theming. Obviously it is very themed to cats and dogs, but if you were to remove those items or maybe if you don't have cats and dogs, I think you would just be able to change out like a rug or you would be able to change out some of the pet themed items and you would just be able to have the build for whatever reason. But I think the theming fits very well for Realm of Magic. And I don't know. If you end up playing with it, I would love to see. I would love to hear about it. But yeah, we're going to be playing with this a lot on my Legacy Challenge. And I'm excited because I'll I'll change that like teen hangout trait to something else. So this way, maybe it'll be just a place that we'll frequent. Or maybe it'll even be something that our child will frequent, our Generation 5 sim. I don't know. I do think that I actually want to... So if you're unfamiliar, the It's a Good House lot in in Brindleton Bay, that's where I built Luella's house. And there's an empty lot that's directly next to the vet's office. So it's, it's kind of like that strip, like that main area of Brindleton Bay. And I kind of think that I want to build either a cafe or a restaurant in that spot. So maybe that'll be one of my next YouTube videos. Is that something that you would be interested in? Be sure to like, let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, I'm very interested. We are also probably nearing the end of this build. So I kind of just want to talk about what I've done and like what the spaces are. So the first floor is kind of like the overall cafe space and there's a bunch of little hangouts. I wanted it to be similar to, I don't know, some of the TV series that you've seen, like maybe like Friends, where there's like kind of that overall comfy hangout area. And on the left side of the build, that's kind of where that is. Like if you come in the entrance and you look left, that's where like that whole area is. But there's also kind of like a, a bigger dining space area where there's like really just one table and then there's a bunch of little tables some are bar height some are just like normal tables and then there's also like a little enclosed seating area 
right where the barista would be. And I don't know, I feel like it's very comfy. It's a place that I would probably go to. I also took some inspiration because there was kind of like a witchy, magical, mystical themed cafe by my college where I went to university. There was there was a place that was similar to this. It definitely didn't look like this. It didn't look this cool. But the interior theming was very much like that. I don't know if you've also been to Salem, Massachusetts. I actually went to a wedding there and it was like in October, kind of near Halloween. So there was a bunch of spaces that were very themed. And I also took a little bit of inspiration from that. The second floor of this build, however, also houses the bathrooms and there's a lot more space to chill, but also spend some time with the cats. So there's like a big cat tree. There, There's just like more open area in, in that area. And also where that sort of tower is instead of it being human seating there's like one human seat and a bunch of cat trees so there's a bunch of places where the stray cats with that lot trait will come and congregate so i actually only had the cats spawn the one time that we came here the second time we came the cats never showed up but i think it takes a while for the cats to come there i also don't know if it's time-based like maybe they're not out later and I think we were there later I'm not entirely sure but now that we're getting towards the end of the build like you could see that I'm decorating the exterior area over here why don't we pop into the game and I can give you a little bit of a tour because I know it can be really hard to see what's going on with everything zooming all around while you're working <laughs> while you're working on a speed build but yeah let's check it out shall we so you can see here is the map of Glimmerbrook and this is that lot that I was telling you about. I actually named it Binks Drinks as kind of a nod to Hocus Pocus, <laughs> which is one of my favorite Halloween movies. And here we are at the lot. And I, I'm i really proud of this build. You're, you're gonna die if I tell you what the actual inspiration was. <laughs> I don't think I mentioned this in the speed build, but the inspiration that I took was from a actual photo of a Scooby-Doo toy. <laughs> but anyway, you come into the front door and there is this little area over here. Here is the sort of seating area, like that comfy, cozy place with all the rugs that I was telling you about. And then underneath the stairs, there's there's a few cat trees. There's another little hangout space over here. Maybe you can do some actual dining with the food that you can get at the cafe. And then here's like a little, there's another nook. And then here is where you would order your drinks or your food. And then over here, I actually snapped these lamps into the edges of of this staircase and I think it looks really good. I'm very happy with it. I wanted it to be like kind of an eclectic feel for this whole area. You come up the stairs and immediately you face the bathrooms. There's some tables that you could put stuff down if you need to. Here is that area for a human sim, just, just kind of like sit down, but then there's a space for the cats. There's also some other little congregated areas over here and another cat tree. And there's also a space that you could dine up here if you wanted to. In the actual bathrooms, there's the human bathrooms and I do have it split. It's not gendered, so you could just go into wherever. There's two toilets on each side and two sinks. And then on the edges of that are the cat toilets. So I put the, the laser kitty litter box. <laughs> I thought it was really cute. I thought it was a nod to the fact that we have cats and dogs here. We're using a cats and dogs pack, I should say. But yeah, that's that's basically the build. If you did want to extend this, you probably could because there is a whole extra floor. But I, I didn't decorate it because I really didn't want this cafe to be that large. But yeah. That's that's the entire build. It is on the gallery if you would like to download it. And if you do, I would love to see how you're using it or how you like it. Be sure to let me know in the comments. But again, I do stream every single day except for Wednesdays and Sundays over on my Twitch channel. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash technicolor. And if you want to catch more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified. All those fancy YouTuber things. But I'll catch you in the next video or hopefully. Hopefully I'll catch you in my Twitch chat. Bye-bye.